On this week's MetPy Monday, find out how to use pandas to access storm reports from places like the Storm Prediction Center and make a plot on a map using Cartapy. Welcome to this week's MetPy Monday. I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to show you a neat pandas trick where you can read CSV data directly from an online source right into a data frame in our notebook and then make a map from it using Cartapy. So in this case, we're going to read uh, a hail report from the Storm Prediction Center. We've had a lot of hail out here in Colorado. I know many of us have been impacted by it with roof damage and other things. So I wanted to make a map of one particular storm that impacted many of us. So I go to the Storm Prediction Center's website and on their storm reports section over here, I enter the date of this particular storm. And then down here, we can get the tornado reports, hail reports, wind reports, and so on in a CSV format. So if you open that CSV format, it looks something like this. It's just a standard comma separated values file with time, size in uh, hundredths of an inch. So 100 would be one inch. Location, county, state, lat, lawn, and any comments that were associated with the report. Now with pandas, you could do a lot with this. You could do some time parsing. You could combine that with date information from the file name and get full date time objects. Uh, you could use geopandas and filter measurements to only be within a certain area, uh, or some overlap polygons. For example, how many hail reports were outside of severe thunderstorm warning polygons or things like that. Today, we're just gonna make a simple map though. So let's go ahead and open up our notebook. And as we always do, we're gonna start out with some imports. So I'm going to import cartapy.crs for coordinate reference system as CCRS. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And then from metpy.plots, I'm going to go ahead and import counties. Since we're operating on a smaller than state scale, uh, it's handy to have US counties available, which is a new feature in metpy 0.9, along with some of our data caching. And then I'm going to import pandas as PD. And we'll go ahead and use the matplotlib inline magic show our plot show up right here in the notebook. And we have to, there we go, put an import there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the URL of the CSV file. So I'm just going to copy that. Go back to our notebook. Now it's really as simple as df for data frame equals pd.readcsv. And normally if you had a file on your local system, you, know, you would put fname.txt or something there. You can also just paste in a URL. You don't have to use requests and go out and download that file locally or anything like that. Pandas is smart enough to recognize this as a URL, go out, make the HTTP request and process the return. And it's done. So now we use df.head to see the top of our data frame. And we see this already been parsed correctly. We have time, size, location, county, state, lat, lawn, and comments all broken up properly as you would expect for a CSV file. So we're already halfway there. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and start making our map. I'm gonna define what projection I want. In this case, just type uh, lamb and then tab to save yourself some typing, Lambert conformal, the central longitude, let's make that about 255, central latitude of about 40. Go ahead and make my figure object, so plot.figure. Got an extra set of parentheses in there. So 12 by nine inches will be my rough figure size if I were to save this out. I'm gonna create an axis. 
if I wanted to make multiple plots here, I could, uh, you know, have one for hail reports, one for tornado reports, and so on. You could put them all on one. And then the projection is going to be proj that I specified earlier. Now we need to set the extent of our map. So this is going to be in uh, longitude, longitude, latitude, latitude format. So X min, X max, Y min, Y max. To cover the area where these storms impacted, I'm going to go 254 to 258 and 39 to 42 degrees. And I'm going to need to specify that that is in geodetic coordinates. Remember, that's not in Lambert conic conformal projected coordinates. Then we're going to add a feature. I'm going to add the US counties. In this case, I'm going to use with scale. And I'm going to go 1 to 5 million. And we shouldn't have to specify anything else. Uh, in some of the earlier versions of MetPy, like 0.9 and 0.9.1, you might have to specify edge color equals black, but that should be the default behavior now with 0.9.2. Uh, so if you haven't updated to that, you can just go into your installation and conda update MetPy. And finally, we need to add our data points. So axe.scatter, df.lon, df.lat for x and y. I'm gonna specify the transform which is plat curry, which if you remember the joke is, that's French for I don't have a projection. It means they're just latitude and longitude points. So if we run that cell, it's gonna take just a little bit to draw those counties because there are quite a few. And we see a cluster of hail reports and one clearly following a group of storms. So that all makes sense. We've got several tracks here that you can see. But we can add a little bit more information to this plot very easily. I'm going to specify the size of the each individual scatter point. I'm going to make it df.size over 20 and square that just to give me some more size contrast. And you have to play with the scaling factor of 20 to get the dots to be the correct size for your taste. But now you can see that we've got some relatively big reports here, big reports, smaller reports, then gradually getting bigger again. So that's an easy way to make a plot like this with just a few lines of Python. And we were talking about six lines to make the map, uh, one line to get the data, and four lines of imports. So not much at all to produce a map like this, which gives you a lot of information and could be automated in any number of ways. I hope that you found this information useful, and thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.